You're listening to Mind Pump, the world's number one ranked fitness, health, and entertainment podcast. And in this episode, we answer fitness and health questions that are asked by listeners and viewers just like you. Now, the way we open the episode is with an introductory portion, so where we talk about current events and scientific studies. Today's episode has a 45-minute intro. After that, we answer the fitness questions. Now, what I'm going to do is give you a rundown of the whole episode. Here we go. So we started by talking about uh, the fact that my baby still isn't being born because they're taking their time. Mm, Little brat. So comfy. Uh, Then Adam talks about his cute uh, foot pajama Halloween costume. Yeah, that's right. Adam lost the battle. Then we talk about Kanye West and his strange interviews. He did one on Letterman and then one with Rogan. Then we talk about the world's first selfie, uh, Doug. Doug actually <laughs> took the world's so If you want to see what Doug looked like when he was 21, very handsome, by the Slaying way. Back actually, then. go to his Instagram, Mind Pump Doug. He just posted his, his, his selfie from back then. Uh, then we talk about the movie Her. It's an old movie, but Justin really enjoyed the sex scene in it. Oh, yeah. Then I talk about how melatonin can help trigger labor and how my wife is wearing blue light blocking glasses all day from Felix Gray to help make that happen. All by, the by the way, we work with Felix Gray. Go check them out. Go to felixgrayglasses.com. That's F-E-L-I-X-G-R-A-Y glasses.com forward slash mind pump. By the way, you get free shipping and free returns. Then Adam talks about learning how to fly fish. Uh, we talk about the crazy wind that happened over the weekend. Uh, we talk about the show Unsolved Mysteries on Netflix. Justin brought up Road Rage. I talked about my friend Arthur Brooks. What's happening? One of the best men uh, I've ever met. We talk about other people getting shadow banned on social media. They're getting crazy with that right now. Then we talked about Organifi, a company, a company that we work with that makes organic supplements, uh, including protein powders, gold juices, and green juices. Uh, if you want to get the Mind Pump discount or just go check them out, go to Organifi.com. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com forward slash Mind Pump. And then use the code Mind Pump for twenty percent off. By the way, we made some granola uh, with the pumpkin spice gold juice from Organifi. You can check it out in the show notes at mindpumppodcast.com. Yum, 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 yum. And then exciting, Mind Pump has a pre-workout supplement partnered with Legion. It's Pulse, but it's bubblegum flavor. Go check them out. Go to buylegion.com. B y l e g i o n dot com forward slash Mind Pump. Check out Pulse Bubblegum mm. Flavor. It's got Mind Pump's little logo in the corner. Put that in your shaker cap. Use the code Mind Pump for 20% off. Then we answered the fitness questions. Here's the first one. This person wants to know what exercises we recommend for women who want to build long, lean, but not bulky legs and a bigger butt. The next question, this person wants to know if calisthenics promote metabolism boosting and testosterone boosting like weights do. The third question, this person wants to know what some of the specific exercises that we recommend for building the muscles of the core. Um, and the final question, this person wants to know what some of the best exercises are to superset uh, if you want to get a great workout in a little bit of time. Mm-hmm. Also, look, there's two days left. If you're listening to this episode when it drops, you have 48 hours to take advantage of one of the craziest promotions we've done all year, half off all of our workout programs, 50% off every single MAPS workout program, including MAPS Split, MAPS Powerlift, uh, and all the others. You also can get 50% off all of the bundles. So bundles are where we combine multiple MAPS programs, and we already discount them 20 to 30% off, but uh, you get 50% off that price with this promotion. So everything is 50% off. Again, 48 hours left. Just go to mapsfitnessproducts.com. One more time, Maps fitnessproducts.com and then use this code October 50. That's October 50. No space. Hey guys, I'm sorry. I was late this morning. Oh yeah. What were you doing? Um, I was trying to trigger labor. <laughs> oh, with the yeah, wife. Yeah, exactly. We're AKA waiting. A sex. Yeah. I don't know, man. It's kind yeah. of, you, it's like I'm, I'm conflicted about it and I feel used. Oh yeah. But it's sex. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're but pretty much uh, a tool. we're waiting, dude. Nothing. Weird. Wow. I know. So I read that only 2% of women have their baby at 42 weeks. We're not there yet. We still got some some time. Hmm. But um, but yeah, now baby, we're like, Baby's nice and comfortable. I, yeah, they are. And uh, I don't know if you guys knew this, but if you hit 42 weeks, you can't have your baby at home with a midwife. The laws won't let, don't, don't allow it. Really? Yeah. So, so now, now what I'm really curious about, because 
you guys have obviously paid for this. You've been using the midwife this whole time. They've been incredibly supportive. And now the hospital rules are really weird where you can only have one person in the labor room. Yeah. So does that exclude the midwife too? Yep, it would just be me. That is bullshit. Uh, I know. That is bullshit. So you mean you went through this whole thing of having a midwife and there's a possibility you may not even get to use her in the in the labor room, which in my opinion is one of the most valuable parts. Correct. Now, is there ways that they can help uh, move things along with you guys? Yeah. So they, they did recommend like walking and sex and relaxing and- um, Jumping out and scaring her. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> scare the baby out? Yeah. yeah. Boo! Yeah. Yeah. Hide in the closet. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. The- <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, but yeah. They um but oh. one, I, I, don't you feel like it's something that Justin would do? I feel like Justin I, would do something yeah. like that. That would be one of my ideas. I'm pretty sure I read this somewhere. Yeah. 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 Scare the shit out no, of me. I actually just thought it. So one time I got scared and I farted, so I figured yeah. this would help. <laughs> um no, the, that did the happen. one of the other things that they'll do is uh castor oil. I guess castor oil is like a natural um a natural thing that can help it makes it greasy in there. Trigger, no. <laughs> you have to eat it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Speaking of feeling castrated, did you uh, see my Halloween <laughs> costume? <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, that was, yeah, that was a crazy transition. Yeah, that was an awesome yeah. transition hey, right uh, there. I'll go, I'll go hey, with it. I can't, someone else you had lost, thinking, bro. You lost the battle. <laughs> I did. It's wow. it. Full I, dad mode. I completely lost. So you were, what's your character? You're, so you're, you're, you're well, a guard? first of all, I wasn't, yeah, it was supposed, wasn't supposed to be anything. So we went up for my buddy's birthday, right, up to the house. And uh, it's his it's his fortieth, and we also have Halloween, right? So right around the corner, and we have all the we have, everyone had their kids there, and all the kids are, you know, Max is one and a half, the oldest is two and a half, so they're all young, and we're like, well, you know, Halloween doesn't seem to be on. I don't think they're going to take the kids out anywhere, so let's do like a Halloween thing for the kids at the house. So I'm like, okay, cool, I'm all game for that, <clears throat> but I'm also thinking, okay, we're not going out anywhere. We're at the house. There's no need for me to dress up. You know, we'll get my son dressed up. We'll dress all the kids up. And so, so you were like, I'm oh, cool. I'm out. Yeah. 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 I, I'm, I'm just going to be chilling. Yeah. Yeah. So I like, I'm, I'm out. I'm out of this. And then, so we actually had bought Max. Uh, and I think I shared this on the show already. Uh, the Maverick outfit. So he was going to be Top Gun, right? So we got all that. You were yeah. going to dress up as the jet. I was going to do nothing. <laughs> I was going to be goose. I was going to be dad. I was going to be a dad for Nobody Halloween. Nobody wants to be goose. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He <laughs> dies. I'm be dad for Halloween. So. Yeah. <clears throat> I got the memo on the way up to uh, up to Truckee that you know, hey, I got you your costume, and I'm like, whoa! I thought we agreed that I didn't need to do a costume. I'm like, no, 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 no! I want you dressing up. I want you dressing up, and I'm like, oh, grumbling, right? And then we get there, and she pulls it out, and I'm like, you did not. <laughs> she made a Sesame Street, and I was Oscar the Grouch for not wanting to. Fuck I you. mean, that's appropriate. <laughs> it, is. <laughs> it is though. You should have. You should have been like, babe, I'll just uh, just dress normal. It looked like it looked like big pajamas uh, <laughs> that you had. It was on. a giant onesie, dude. What, it was a giant, did it have little feet? At least you weren't Big Bird. No, yeah. it didn't. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Right? That, that would have sucked. I feel like that would. I, I was like cool with Oscar the Grouch. I'm like, that's that's okay. You know, that's would have been better. So she was Cookie Monster, and he was Elmo. So uh, and I, he actually did okay. I thought I thought he wasn't going to keep it on, but he he kept it on and was running around the house the whole time. And then my other buddy's kid was uh, like a Johnny Bravo, like the race car driver. He had like uh, the full race car and helmet and everything. Get up, Johnny Bravo. Yeah or nice. not? Yeah, isn't it Johnny Bravo? No, no, no. Speed Racer. Speed Racer. Or speed Racer. That's what. Yeah, it is. Johnny Bravo is the, the cartoon where the Duke combs his oh, hair. Yeah, the big blonde uh, hair. Right? What was Whoa. it? What's the other one? What's the uh, There's another race car one that I thought was. Didn't we were trying to figure this out the other day. I thought it was Johnny. It's not Johnny Bravo. I thought it was Johnny something. Johnny Quest. Mm. No. Yeah. You judge the red and white race car. Speed Racer. It is Speed, speed Racer. Racer. It yeah. is. Oh. Mm-hmm. What's his name? Um, Who the hell knows? I, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. know. I, I didn't watch it. Did you guys watch Speed Racer? No. I mean, I I knew of it, but yeah, I didn't care for. I it. knew the song, yeah. but that's about it. That wasn't one of my go-to's. No, 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 no. no definitely it wasn't. It wasn't uh, like uh, Thundercats. Yeah, no, Thund- sh- no schnarf in there. <laughs> no, so st- I wasn't interested. <laughs> I, yeah. I showed Jessica. So uh, Hulu has the original Thundercats, which to my delight. I mean, I, I'm oh, scrolling yeah. through and I see it and. You know, Jessica's like, "Why are you so excited?" I'm like, it's "Thundercats, dude, does it hold <laughs> up?" Or because I, I watched He Man in like the old school one, and I was like, "I couldn't believe how feminine he was." Yeah, I, I had no idea. Well, that's before he turns into yeah. He Man or whatever. We're right. Yeah, yeah. It's um, no, it was. It's good. I mean, it's good. It kind of stands up a little bit. Uh, but I showed Jessica, and she's like, "This sucks. Who's this cat snarf?" But now. Mm. This is weeks later now. Mm-hmm. She'll randomly be like, snarf, 
Because no, yeah, okay. it sticks in your head. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? You know, it's a lame show that I tried to introduce <laughs> to my kids was Saved by the Bell. I used to like have oh, all yeah. these memories of that that show. I'm just like, oh yeah, dude, Kelly Kapowski, you know, all this. And and my kids are just sitting there like looking at me like, Dad, this is so boring and yeah. lame. <laughs> yeah, like, dude. Really? I'm like, you're right. <laughs> this <laughs> yeah. is totally cheesy you, okay. and awful. So I was watching it with my kids too, trying to get them into it. And then there was a, uh, an episode where Slater dances. <laughs> Do you remember what Slater Dance is? <laughs> no, but I need to watch it. So so he I don't know why they thought this was normal. Slater dances. There's like a dance competition between him and someone else. Okay. And he does ballet. Like that's his that's his go-to. Like he twirls and stuff. Nice. Which c- catches you off guard because yeah. you expect, you know, Slater. High school dude, he's right. not going to do that, and he does. He busts out the thing. Wow! And the crowd's like, "Well, hey. you think maybe your kids aren't into because they're too young? Is that because it's more high school drama stuff, right? Like relationships yeah. and breaking up, and uh, like who's dating who? It's really cheesy, dude. <clears throat> like, Is it it's bad? bad? Yeah, it's bad. I, I watched mean, it a lot when I was a kid. Me too. Oh, that was my show, dude. Yeah, yeah. that but it, was. But I, different I, times. But dude. I think we were like junior high and high school, right? We're, we're like you weren't that young. I think it was junior high. Yeah, yeah, because you're because they're all high school kids, and mm-hmm. you're in junior high, so you looked up to all that shit. What was weird is what Screech the guys was. Named Dustin Diamond or whatever. Uh-huh. Thing, what he did after? What did he do uh, afterwards? He, he did a porn and then he yep. then he oh. fought somebody. What? Yeah, then, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. D- Danny Barducci. I did not know that. Yeah, dude. Damn, yeah. you guys stay up to all that stuff. It's uh, just yeah. it's just weird I'm when all, you're. I'm all screeched out. <laughs> yeah. I, I got him like everywhere. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How, so how much later after Say by the Bell was done did he do that? I have no idea. Uh, he needs some money though. I knew that much. Yeah, yeah. and he's kind of a big big goofy dude, <clears throat> wasn't he? Yeah, because he was like a little nerd in that thing and. Did either one of you guys listen to uh, Kanye's interview with Joe? No, I did not. I was uh, going to do that on the way over here. Was it any good? It was not. Dude. Okay, so I Cause so I watched his interview with David Letterman. So I want to hear how he was with Rogan because okay. I got some comments. Well, okay. Well, first of all, Letterman is in, is the G. Bro, in my opinion, he's one of the greatest interviewers yeah. of all time. So you watch? Yeah, did you watch it on the Netflix? I did. Oh, good. I'm glad you. I'm it, glad you're watching that. It now. was not good. Oh, really? No. So either was okay. So I was want. I have somebody I follow. I forget his name right now. Um. He's uh, married to some famous chick, and so he's got a massive following. And uh, he smokes weed, and he's a fit dad. He's cool, like so. I follow him, right? So <laughs> naturally, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. It's a little. I got to preface this, right? So, yeah, exactly. I have Instagram respect for this guy right now, right? So, so I'm like, right. uh, he he posts like, oh man, the Kanye West interview was really good. Him and his wife watched it, so I was like, oh okay, well maybe maybe it's better than what I expected it to be. So I, I I put it on the drive home. I have a I had a three and a half hour drive home. I was like, oh, this is a perfect time for Joe Rogan, you know, podcast. So I put it on, and um, it's fucking terrible. And it, why it's so bad is is Kanye is he is so scattered brained, and I and I also Dude, he's weird. Mm-hmm. He is, and I think uh, I think too many people have told him he's brilliant. Oh yeah, because he and he is musically. Musically, he is absolutely brilliant, and because I think so many people have told him brilliant, he thinks he's brilliant in all these other things. That's right. And so he starts talking Uh-oh. about stuff. Like Joe would ask a question, and by the way, like I would. So you know, after hearing that interview, I would love to interview Joe to ask like what was going through <laughs> his head when he's listening to this guy, because oh, I, no. I can just imagine being at, being someone who does interviews. Right? It's stressful when you have got somebody who is just not stringing anything together, right? You're asking, you feel like you're asking the right questions and you're probing really well and they are just left, right, left, so did right. You, did you feel uncomfortable uh-huh. listening to it? Yeah. Yeah, that's how I felt with the Letterman one. So at one point, him and Letterman are kind of going at each other about politics. Mm. And he, and then there was other times when he's going off and his facial, so if you watch it, this Jessica and I both watched it and she was just as uncomfortable. If you watch it, You'll notice that uh, Kanye's facial expressions don't match uh, like what's contextually appropriate. So <laughs> almost like, and you see this sometimes with people who don't who have trouble reading other people. Um, and you could tell like uh, Letterman would say something that's kind of funny, but he would he would kind of make this weird face, or he'd have this weird smile at times that was inappropriate. And so you could tell that he's just not. He's not a hundred percent, and yeah. he does talk about. He's thinking of other things the whole time. He, well, he's just he's just kind of strange. But at one point, he, the the one good part of that interview is he said because you could tell he's aware that he's not uh, like normal like right, most right. people, and he said, you know, y'all like crazy music, y'all like you know crazy creativity, but you never consider that it probably comes from crazy people. So you could you could hear that he's like acknowledging like, 
yeah, man, I'm weird. Like I'm not. Yeah, I thought Joe. I, Joe like just pumped his tires like the whole time. Like I think I think Joe felt uncomfortable uh, for that exact reason, right? He's talking to himself and he's getting weird feedback. So if you're, I, I could like again, I would love to interview Joe because mm. I can't imagine the feelings that are going through Joe as he's like asking questions and then he's like getting those weird facial responses and then he's going all over the place. Like, and then Joe, and then you could see like Kanye will will a lot of times when he doesn't need to be, get, he'll get defensive. Mm -hmm. over something and like joe's just like really probing and trying to f learn more about it and he gets more defensive then he gets rattled and it makes him go more left and more right huh. and then joe would like reel him back in and be like well you know i just i, I don't know why people think you're crazy because i think you're you're brilliant <laughs> and you know i was like oh god joe i'm like dude yeah. you're just he's trying to but you can tell what he's doing he's trying to calm him down so yeah. he doesn't get this the interview doesn't get worse you know he, he would interrupt Real him, tell him that he is a smart guy and that this is just how his brain works. That he's 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 downloading all this information at once, and it's that's well, just know how it comes out. You know, he's bipolar. Did he talk about it on there? No, he didn't talk about his. Well, at least not the hour and a half that I made it through. Or yeah, whatever. he talked about that on the Letterman interview, and then so you listened. You didn't get to watch. No, I had it on. I, I had it on YouTube, but I, I was driving, so yeah. I wasn't watching. So when you watch, one thing that I noticed, and you see this with some artists is there were he he had a tough time making eye contact with David Letterman but at moments he would talk to the audience and then he when he would talk to the audience so Letterman would ask him a question and he'd answer but he'd look at the audience hmm. and then start doing his preaching thing and you could tell he felt more comfortable you see this with artists sometimes where like like Michael Jackson was like this right he on stage seems like he's comfortable and charismatic and just mm -hmm. whatever then you interview him and he's super awkward and weird yeah mm -hmm. so you you tend to see that sometimes with with people like that who are very talented in one area and but they're just so weird with their I mean uh, did you get any like political stuff out of it like why he even decided to go <sighs> yeah, they, uh, so, so he, hard in that direction so Joe did like talk about uh, politics with him but yeah, even that like his I, I can't even tell you what he is because he's got he's got some <laughs> he's got some he has some very conservative because he he has he, he openly talked about being saved and and, yeah. and being a believer in God and, and being a Christian and everything like that so he has some really conservative views but then he has some really whack ass liberal views so he's like all over the board mm. so he and which just again while he can never win like that you're never gonna win you're never gonna win a side if you're like in on both sides so. I couldn't follow. Make him commander in chief. Imagine that. <coughs> Given yeah. the, the the nuclear launch codes. No yeah. thanks. Yeah, and then he then <laughs> yeah, he went on theme music. He yeah. went on a tangent too about like all the conspiracy theories of like how other famous people have died and how you know they they were trying to medicate him and like it's just it was it was not good, dude. I, and it wasn't even entertaining. I was just sucked into it. So what happened to me? This is like like hell funny. Hmm. So I set it up on my my dash. I told you guys that the wind was so bad last night, and uh, I'm driving. And the phone flew across the car and into the passenger side floor. Uh -huh. So, and it was already going. And I'm on the freeway, and it's like I'm driving 80 miles an hour plus. And I'm so like, you're stuck. Yeah. So I, I was stuck listening to it. You so I had to, to stop listen. and get gas. <laughs> <laughs> so I listened to about an hour longer. Begrudgingly. Than I, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I'm like, well, I would have turned it off already because it was so bad. But I'm like, okay, well, maybe it gets better. And I, I'm not gonna pull over just to grab my phone, right? I'll just wait till I have to get uh, gas. Well, yeah. so. now, now, you just saved me two hours, dude. <laughs> yeah. So thank you. Now, I, I, on his album, it's either his album or something he posted. They showed this on Letterman because he, he it's either on his album or something else. I don't know, but it says, it's a quote and it, I think it's a brilliant quote that kind of highlights- His what, bipolar quote? Yeah, and yeah, it says- his, last, his album before last. Yeah, it says something like, I, I hate, I fucking hate being bipolar. It's awesome. Like it's it so Whoa. highlights the two sides mm -hmm. of that mental you know situation or yeah, whatever. Lyrically, the guy is a genius. I mean, he he says things that are are powerful, have deep meaning, and I so I get where where the the brilliance comes from, like musically, uh, and I get that, and I get what Joe was trying to say because he's got all this information that's that's coming to him, and he just and and he did say this. So in his defense, and then I thought he articulated uh, decent was. You know, that he's just getting all this information and he's just honest. Mm. And so he just says what it's on his mind. He thinks this way. He feels this way. He just says it. And I think what happens when you're someone like that is you're fearless about just speaking your mind. And sometimes brilliance comes out mm. and sometimes it comes out in some hip hop song. You know mm. what I'm saying? So, well, there's mm. so while you're saying this, um, and I've talked about this before about how I, how high IQ tends to be strongly or, or more strongly associated with mental disorders. Uh, there's an article that I, I cause, because of that, because I watched his um, his interview, because he is brilliant in one aspect, which is music. 
And there was a study that I pulled up and there were some, some theories as to why. And they said that they think that people with higher IQs tend to have more mental issues because they are they have higher levels of awareness. They react more to stimuli from the environment, which creates a hyper brain, hyper body scenario where they display a hyperactive central uh, nervous system. And so this, they think, is one of the reasons why people tend to, who are higher IQ, tend to have um, you and, know, and more that, issues. That's how Joe d- said it. He says, you know, a lot of people th- think that about me. He says, I'm, I have a lot of energy. He mm-hmm. goes, you have a lot of energy, and when you focus it in directions, you get a lot more done than the average person. And yeah. so you don't want to stifle that. He's like, so I don't think you're, I don't think you're crazy. Mm-hmm. So he kept telling him that. Have you guys ever known mm-hmm. anybody who had uh, really bad bipolar? Yeah, I've mm-hmm. sh- shared on the podcast. Oh, you did? So. Oh, yeah. I dated yeah. a girl that yeah, did he that. dated Oh, one. yeah, yeah. that's right. I didn't, I didn't know what I was signing up for until I after. For- yeah, <laughs> I yeah. forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. No, she used marijuana to medicate herself too. And, and if she didn't have that, then it was all Went bad. crazy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I, I had a client uh, that I trained and he, I, I was training him and then I, I noticed like, some his energy was ramping up with each style training like three days a week, and then by the third workout of the of that week, he was like pitching like the most wild ideas to me. Brought all these plans that he wrote out, like the things that he's gonna do, and I'm like, this is strange. It's not making sense anymore. It's kind of weird. And then that was it. And then the very next week, I get a call from his parents that he was they had to put him in, uh, you know, in one of those places, a uh, medical hospital or whatever. Wow. Um, because he believed like some just wild, crazy stuff. So yeah. I don't know. Kind of crazy. Sort yeah. of ramps up, yeah. It does. Kind of crazy. Anyway, what did you guys think of the, the world's first selfie that we saw? Did you guys see Oh, that? yeah. <laughs> the world's first selfie. <laughs> what? Doug's yeah, picture. Dude. Oh, yeah, right. oh, oh, the world's first <laughs> yeah, selfie. Yeah, dude. It was Doug <laughs> in front of a mirror it's all a, young and Doug. handsome. First of all, that Doug, you were how old were in this picture? <clears throat> I think I was about 21 at but, the time. So a couple things. Number one, extremely handsome. I'm just going to no, say that you. right now. No, for real. <laughs> Number two, has swag, dude. This whole time, he's this, got his collar. He's been hiding his swag. Yeah, this whole time, dude. He's got a jean jacket, polo. He's got the pomp collar going. He's got the uh, you know very Saved by the Bell hair going on. Like he's got it all, dude. Like straight out of an aha video. But yeah. you, but yeah. you, you're taking a picture of yourself, which nobody did really back then. Was that a thing or what? Or did you invent it? Uh, no, I invented it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, right? Yeah. Everybody can uh, say thank you. <laughs> your gift to Instagram. Yeah. So what were you doing at that at that age, 21? 21, I had, I think I just finished uh, college at that time. And I was kind of at a crossroads in my life. I had gotten my degree in business, focused on accounting, but I hated accounting. And so I believe I took a job as soon as I got out of college uh, selling industrial cleaning chemicals door to door to to companies. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's how much you hated yeah, that's accounting. How, that's how bad accounting. Yeah. That's how much is. I hated accounting. So that's just, how bad accounting yeah. is right there. I had my my old roommate was an accountant from for Deloitte and Touche. That's the one job I would I uh, yeah. never. So he, I'll never forget. We lived together. We were in our we were same similar age, twenty two ish or so. And he he rented a room for me. He just had just finished college in accounting and was and he got a great job in San Jose at, at Deloitte and Touche. And we'd come home every day from work and and talk. And man, he wouldn't get home till like ten o'clock at night for like a ten plus hour day. And I'd ask him about his day, and no, this is literally every single day of his life for a year. He's like, he would tell me, I made photocopies all day long. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> like that's literally what they do. Like, oh my they, God. so like your first year is of like you know you intern underneath like another like for ten hours. Yes. Just he basically is Dude. like running around for other accountants and doing what they tell him to do. And all, how long before you snap like well, an he, office space? He, left. And he did, bro. He he, he he ended up leaving the Bay Area, and it was a great job, right? So like, I guess the track is like within five years, you're making a quarter million per, uh, plus. You're now within uh, like range of being a partner and stuff. Like, I mean, the track to to make really good money is there, like in that yeah. position. And so. He kind of knew, like, oh, if I just buckle down. But he would, he's, he, after a year of it, he's like, I'm out. He left that career completely, moved to Napa, became like a wine manager, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, and, went, yeah. and went down that direction, never looked back, dude. That was my, wow. so one of my very first jobs was that I, I got a job at a, a mortgage company as a kid. I was like 16, maybe 15, 16. And they hired me temporarily to make, uh, to d- make double copies of all of their, mortgage files. So I would sit in an office all day and I would take their files. I'd take out the staples, put them on the machine and (laughs) could you imagine me doing that? Yeah. And so I'm going to say, I'm going to say this right now uh, with full confidence, a hundred percent. 
a good 90% of those files are missing stuff. I'm just going to say it right now. <laughs> because <laughs> shit would jam or whatever. I couldn't take it. Fuck it. Put it together. There was a lot of phone calls that were uh, <laughs> yeah, made after that. you're done. So you know, yeah. somebody's like, hey, can you pull up my, my mortgage file? <laughs> this is missing half the signatures. Where did they go, dude? That was oh, because I couldn't take it. Anymore. Also, dude, it, so you're the one that uh, recommended her, the movie. Right? Yes. Yes. Okay. You Tell me it wasn't, that. wasn't it wasn't a good movie? You finally no, just was, watched it? Yeah. Well, I watched oh. the whole thing. And uh, no, it, it wasn't a bad movie. It was interesting, but there was some scenes in there that were like really uncomfortable, yeah, dude. Yeah. Like so, you had sex with yeah. It? It's so she's like trying to have sex like in his ear, you know, because she's not obviously there. And so they're like like talking their way through the whole thing, and it's like a pretty long scene with yeah. Joaquin Phoenix and uh, Scarlett Johansson. She's the voice. Yeah, she's just like like soothing him through this whole like. Se- oh my god, we were just like I can only imagine if I was watching that like my parents next to me or something <laughs> like my skin would have just ripped off now my t- body now tell me that movie didn't depict uh, ai in probably the one of the more realistic uh, ways. Yeah. Well, here's the thing with the AI part of it. I think that honestly, they were just like basically therapists. I mean, isn't that your take on the the ending of, they, of the whole thing? They were. And then the part that meant spoiler alert, right? Yeah. Here's the part that I thought it's was pretty realistic. old. I think you there do, you go. I think you do a spoiler <laughs> word on a movie that's like 12 years yeah. old. You deserve People it. People probably forgot about yeah. it. They're, They're like, like, God yeah. damn it, Sal, you ruined it for me. Yeah. No, here's the thing. It, it, it's not this like apocalyptic AI, you know, going to kill the... No. They are AI machines or you know technology. They'll just disappear into the internet, which is what they did. Yeah. So I felt like that was realistic. No, the great well, part about like yeah, good sci-fi movies like that is I, someone or some of it is going to be right. Mm-hmm. Right. I I I, lo- I liked the thing that I had seen that I thought was really original was Westworld's idea of the uh, the virtual like therapy. Yeah, I think that it was similar to that. The, uh, the her like, right had, had a similar concept. That that mm. that feels very realistic to me, right? Mm-hmm. Like you are going to Sal have all kinds of you're gonna book uh, Instagram tweets. I mean, you have so much written and verbal content that's recorded of you. It should not be hard to create a AI version of you, how you would respond and answer to like ninety percent of questions probably mm-hmm. asked of you. And so, how cool is that for your kids' kids? Potentially, one to, when you're long and gone, to be able to communicate, you with know, you. yeah, create an avatar of yourself that lives on. Yeah, yeah. You know? like, what a cool yeah. way to listen it to does. history, huh? Bro, it's like Superman. Remember when Superman he goes to his crystal palace and he puts the crystal in, and his dad shows up. Yeah, it's like it's AI. That's what it was. <laughs> so they were. It is. They were the first ones to do it. Right. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I haven't thought hey, of that. There yeah, you go. Hey, sure. I forgot to say this. This is a, something that's interesting as well. So uh, I talked earlier about uh, Jessica trying to get this labor started. Melatonin. Melatonin actually helps stimulate labor. Do you guys know this is why women tend oh, to have yeah? babies at night? Hmm. So she's wearing, I'm ah, having her wear the- That's the reason, huh? So she's wearing Felix Rays now all day, the night ones all day. Oh, interesting. Because yeah, to, to, it calms the body, and I don't know what the theory is. I guess it tells the, the, the body it's okay to have the baby now. It's, it's, it's hmm. at night. You're maybe hidden or whatever. So I'm having to wear the the night ones all day long to see if that helps. And that's because it it kicks up melatonin production, right? Yes, because it'll kick up melatonin production or at least prevent it from getting suppressed as much as if you were exposed to lots of light. So, you know, you have the daytime Felix Grays, which block a lot of the – this is just for the audience, right? For Block a lot of the damaging blue light. But they don't block all the blue light because you need some of it to stay alert. So if you're wearing – blue light blocking glasses during the day, you want ones that are made for the day. Otherwise, you could find yourself getting sleepy at work or in front of your computer. The nighttime Felix Grey ones, those are the ones that block most of the blue light that encourage sleep. So there's two two types. Of, I noticed such a difference of the two. Yeah. Yes. So right. she's wearing the nighttime ones during the day because we're trying to get as much melatonin as possible to make this thing happen. Oh, very yeah. cool. Yeah. So you do notice a difference between yeah, the two. Oh, yeah. No, I yeah. notice a big difference between the two of them. I The way I look at it is if I'm... Because there's times when I'm uh, working on the computer or phone late at night, but I need to be working, and I know I'll be on it for an hour, two hours or more. I don't want to be nodding off while I do that, so I'll wear the daytime ones, even though it's nighttime because I'm working still. What I notice about that is that even when I'm when I'm done working and I pull them off and I decide to go to bed, I actually can still get to sleep pretty quick. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The de- now, if I were to wear the nighttime ones and be working, I'll be nodding off while I'm working. It right. only takes about a half hour Same. to an hour of having those on. I actually start to fall asleep. Yeah, yeah. It'll get me, I'll get sleepy from it. So uh, that's yeah. what's cool about the, the two differences. And so then when there's nights when 
I know I got to get to bed early because I got a, bit, a early morning the next day. I put those suckers mm. on really early, and then I go I go to sleep early. I need them to just look at your sweatshirt right now. Yeah, so, dude. Why so, you. Dang, Thank you. bro. You're, yeah. you're fluorescent. So bright. Yeah. You're like a bumblebee's wet dream right now. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on here? Yeah. Was, Was this my, all part of the whole like fishing? You know, I saw you doing some casting and oh, whatnot. Dude, so uh, I I. Um, I went fly fishing this week. It's this harder week. than it looks, huh? It's way harder. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's hella hard. Did I, you get anything? Uh, no. My buddy no, was just practicing, right? Yeah, yeah so we, do, we took lessons, right? So I, I wanted to actually go get, uh, have somebody who's who does this, right, to teach us. And so the like first half of the day, you don't even go to the, the water. Like It's just learning how to cast. It's just 10 and 2. Yeah, it's just learning how to cast the entire time. Look at this guy over here. I know. <laughs> <laughs> What's ten and two, bro? Hey, to be that's, hey, that's when you drive your car, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you to throw out some more lingo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, that's not fishing lingo, Justin. That yeah. is driving. That's yeah. driving. Lingo. That's uh, the driving instructor lingo. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <clears throat> no, no isn't that isn't that like it back at, at ten and then two? Like, the, yeah. No, no, that's not it. <laughs> yeah, you actually. Well, what's it's the, it's uh, one o'clock. One, one o'clock is as far back as you want to go. You got the uh, wrong time, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, hey, but uh, yeah. I had to throw it out there anyway. But what I, you know, I learned a lot. It was really. It was cool, and it t- it's got me all motivated to go get my own and practice because. Oh, here we go. Yeah, now you're gonna go spend a shit ton yeah. of money now. I don't think get all fly fishing now. No, out. I don't think it's that crazy expensive. I go, I think way more expensive. Oh, now. I don't know. Justin said YouTube says ten to two. Yeah, so uh, fuck maybe, you. Maybe that's why. You, <laughs> maybe that's why you didn't catch anything. Yeah, exactly. You're doing it wrong, bro. <laughs> so is the idea to make it. It flick it over the water like it's a flying yeah, insect. Yeah, right, right. So thanks, uh, Doug. The the thing that <laughs> You're welcome. I, the thing that is really so you have my the four of us guys that all did and all of us I would consider it well maybe not today anymore right we're all forty but uh, we used to be athletes right so. The idea of picking up technique and form, and the guy was like, "Oh man, you guys are really good, but we weren't that good at all." Um, you know, but I'm sure he says that to everybody, right? So they make him feel good and tip him afterwards. So he's telling us, "Oh, you guys are great." What I had a hard time with was the the technique is to actually whip it hard back, and then you just barely bring it forward, and then the momentum of it coming back is what makes it float or whatever. But you, but what's hard about that is you naturally you want to whip just like you were to throw a ball or throw anything is to cock back and then you whip forward i mean that's how you do everything else you throw a frisbee you throw a baseball you throw anything it's the it, you you cock back and then you whip forward is what gets so you have that built in you as a someone who's played sports mm. really hard to break that habit so even and so you're you're doing taught to whip back and then gently come forward I mean, you get a, I get a couple that are really good, and then I get back in the habit. Mm-hmm. And then if you muscle it forward, that thing comes back around and normally hits you in the back of the head or whips you and sticks on you. So, <laughs> yeah, it was it was yeah, a, it's it, all finesse. Yeah, it was. Uh, but I like that, right? I like things that it, if it was easy, it'd be no fun. So the fact that it's challenging and it's difficult to just, now, what kind of fish do you catch out there? Uh, my buddy got a trout, so it just depends on it, that depends on where you're at. Oh, he did catch something. You, I did. So one of us did catch. Did, so did you guys cook it up? No, we didn't. It was a catch and release. Oh, was, okay. Yeah, we were in a. Uh, I feel a like po- that's more cruel than just taking it and eating it. No, it's not cruel at all. Yeah. Really? There's, no, it doesn't hurt them to get hooked like that. Yeah, it's a sore in their mouth. Right. Yeah. yeah, but you imagine you just walk around and someone just pulls you out from yeah. life and then throws Dude, you back. Fish in. are so dumb. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. My bad. Not, only, yeah. not only that, just I think nightmare. they'd be super happy they got hooked by a human and the human throws them back in the pond because the other thing that normally happens to them is a, a eagle will come by and swoop them up and right. grab them and take them and eat them. Oh, so. Bigger <laughs> fish. Yeah. yeah. So that's. I think that's not a bad thing. But yeah, it was. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, it was much harder uh, than I expected it to be, but I'm I'm definitely intrigued to to want to get good at it. Now yeah, on, it's, it's on, meditative, dude. yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. Now That's on the word. drive back, how was the the wind? Because I got an alert from PG and E that said <laughs> that they. PG and E. God, what a great company, huh? Jesus oh, Christ. don't please. Don't I know, God. Justin. Anyway, dude, they, 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 they sent out alert that they were going to start shutting people's power off because of high winds. So I know we're all. Well, Lord Newsom has them in his pocket. Yeah. This is my, that's, Lord, yeah Lord he's Newsom. Like, he's in force, you know, like uh, Order 66. And so we have no power again, dude. Yeah. So I know, yeah, he's turned off. So I know he's all upset because of that. But I'll tell you right now, that was some of the worst wind that I've ever driven in really? before. Yeah. I pulled over because I thought I had flat tires. And now I was driving the, the, yeah. little, the little car, the little little Mercedes, it's tiny. So that thing was getting blown off. I was driving my truck. You know what it's like driving the lifted truck. It blows you like crazy. Yeah. They had, when I was going through Sacramento, which is, there's not even country even nearby. So it didn't, it was weird. The road was getting covered with debris. And I'm talking like 
big ass branches and leaves and everything. And the wind was blowing so hard. I'm driving down the freeway, 60 to 80 miles an hour, and geez, this debris is smacking into the car as I'm driving. So it was bad. Oh, it was really uh, bad. Okay. And then I can't believe you guys didn't know this morning when I woke up at my house. Uh, the whole it looks like somebody blew leaves all over the place. It wasn't super bad though, but yeah, yeah there was some. Yeah, no, it was bad. But you guys, so you I'm have no glad at least there was yeah some reason for it. No, I it was, was like so pissed. It was, and so it was so bad too that I thought we had fires coming in because it all the dust. It made the whole city all the way heading from Truckee all the way to San Jose. Even when I got into San Jose, was all foggy. And it was from all the dust from all the, the, the all the ranches and farms stuff blowing over the freeway, and it made it look terrible. Yeah, so it dude, was pretty oh, bad. Speaking dude. of nature, you know what I watched yesterday? So you know uh, Unsolved Mysteries has new, seri- new yes. episodes? Yeah, oh, new I, I watched out? one of them. So yeah. they have a bunch of new episodes. Oh, cool. Okay, And I love Unsolved Mysteries. The music still gives me the chills. Oh, until the, my power went out. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. But one of the episodes was about the tsunami in Japan in 2011, and the afterwards how... I guess hundreds of people saw spirits because of all the the deaths and stuff. Oh wow! So they're telling all these you know spooky st- spirit stories or whatever. But the first I don't know ten minutes or so of the of that series, they were showing clips that I hadn't seen before of the actual tsunami. Oh my goodness! You know, at, at its peak was 130 feet. Yeah, it's crazy. of a wall of water coming through. Wow. Could you imagine seeing that? No, I can't. Yeah. It was just terrifying. That has to be like one of the scariest things. Oh, to see. dude! Some of the stories these people were telling were just yeah. heartbreaking. About like, don't ruin it. I want to watch. All oh, this. I know. Yeah. Did you only watch one? How many did you watch? No, I watched a bunch of them. Oh yeah, don't tell. Dude, us that's what I love about Netflix, though, because I mean, they they came out with that this year. The other unsolved mysteries, and yeah. they just did a follow up yeah. with another six episodes. Yeah, so that put me down in kind of the mood to watch scary stuff. Yeah. So uh, there's a movie I've been wanting to watch uh, called Us. Have you guys seen this with uh, Jordan Peele? Oh yeah, the, I've been wanting to see that. I haven't seen that yet. Though. So did you like Get Out? Mm-hmm. Okay, so Get that Out was freaky. Was, yeah, it was really good, right? So Us is interesting. It's really good, but at the end, I had to look, go online and try to figure out a couple things. Oh, yeah. But it is it is really good. That's, just leave you That's thinking. the one that where they're all stuck in the cabin and they see themselves, right? Like the kid, they, they're getting basically haunted by a, another version of themselves. Yes. Right? Now, huh. this one has more symbolism and some stuff is a little weird and it, there's elements of it with comedy, so comedy <laughs> horror, which I appreciate sometimes. Oh, yeah. But well made. Jordan Peele is a really he does a really really damn good job. Yeah, I've seen. It. Yeah, did I mean he's is he, did he get awards for the other movie? Because I know like Get Out. I think Get won Out. Some yeah, I thought they won some awards. But yeah, he's been doing uh, scary movies, which is interesting. Yeah, that genre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. so he's he normally does comedy. Yeah, I know him from the him and his uh, his partner. Key and Peele. Yeah, right. So they do the the YouTube clips that are hilarious. That oh, they yeah. do. Have you ever seen him do the uh, yes the draft and yeah. everything? Oh, dude, he's so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that and the teacher, the substitute yes. teachers. That, that does all the names. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. Well, what I like about him is he puts like Easter eggs and symbolism in some of these movies, apparently. So as I'm watching us, I'm noticing things and I'm like, this doesn't make sense. What's going on? So then I go online and there's like so many articles and forums talking about elements of the movie, which I appreciate. I like that. I like watching movies and then afterwards feeling like I'm still in it because I'm trying to figure things out. So yeah. it was very, it was Have pretty- you guys noticed a lot of road rage going on uh, out there? Like just every time I'm I'm driving, you know, to work Who, now, did, you get, who back, did you get pissed off? It at? wasn't even me. I've just been like, <laughs> I've actually been like backing off quite a bit and like making room for everybody. I'm trying to be cool and nice and like, I'm not even joking. Uh, probably I've seen 10 people just fighting on the road and like jockeying for position and cutting each other off, flipping each other off. I didn't know if this was a thing like everywhere, like everybody's super pissed off because, you know, maybe they have politics or whatever the hell's yeah, going on. Yeah, I feel on. like you're an easy target. You know what I'm saying? You're <laughs> you're a big white guy, lifted truck. You know, you're driving in the Bay Area. Yeah, no, I, I, mean, get, I get that. I mean, you know, uh, we live, got this but, huge flag. Yeah, it's like America. I got a yeah, gun yeah, out the yeah, window. Like, yeah. I don't know why yeah, people weird. are flipping me off when I'm driving. <laughs> All these Priuses hate me. I don't know why. It's, why no idea. Yeah, yeah. And, then, and then you talk shit about Priuses yeah. two episodes ago. So, yeah, no, I don't yeah. know why I'm getting no, all these. That in. would be obvious. No, it's just like just <laughs> everywhere though. I don't know if it, maybe it's just, yeah, I'm bringing that kind of energy with me on the road. I, people are just tense. <clears throat> I think people are just yeah. more tense, which you know what? Speaking of which, because I have noticed, not that necessarily, but you're right. People seem, and understandably why people are tense, it's coronavirus oh and Let's calm down. uncertainty, social media and media in general is very extreme at the moment. This is a fact. Um, but I tell you what, dude, if you guys want to feel, and you're listen, listeners too, <laughs> the listeners as well, if you want to start feeling a little better, go on YouTube, 
look up Arthur Brooks, listen to some of his interviews, some of his podcasts. The guy, he's a, he does such a great job of listing out the logical facts, and also he's a very positive, just one of the best human beings uh, ever. I actually was texting him over the weekend about all this stuff, and he says, yeah, he goes, you know, it seems that way. It seems like things are more extreme. A lot of it has to do with the fact that media follows the clicks, mm -hmm. and so the extreme stuff is what gets the attention, and then because there's more extreme stuff, it creates this perception that things are more extreme as well. Yeah. But he's such a positive, like one of the things he talks a lot about is about learning to love your neighbors and how one of the big, the, or love your enemy, excuse me. Mm -hmm. And he says, you know, one of the, the, the worst mistakes we can make is assume that the people we disagree with are just evil. Well, this is my, uh, I guess I get, you know, bummed out quite a bit that that message isn't at the forefront like it used to be like you, the only way to combat hate is with love and i feel like you just don't see like any leadership out there like promoting that it's all like super divisive and i'm so sick of this shit yeah well he says it represents um just again it's media is making things seem more extreme people are in their bubbles so they don't get challenged as often and then the strategy now is to make the other side seem not just wrong, but rather like evil. Well, evil. I feel like it's part of what's why this is so crazy for us right now is that everybody, anybody who has a following of, I don't know, 10,000 people or more now is like they have their own media outlet. Yeah. And they're all fighting for attention and clicks and views because that's how they monetize and make money or they're trying to build a business themselves. So it's exaggerated to a level that we've just never seen before. And then, yeah. so speaking of which, and I feel like I would love your guys' opinion on this. Uh, so I told you guys I got shadow banned, right? So my stories- Hella people are right now, yeah. by the way. Okay. And I'm hearing this from other people. So what's the deal? Because you, you said that Rob Wolf was experiencing- Rob or, Wolf, Brett yeah. Weinstein. Right? Yeah, Weinstein. J Chase Tuning, our, our buddy, was talking. And Chase does, uh, you know, I don't- Chase? Has, yeah. He got it for for posting some shit on, and he said it was like it was a it was it was satire. It wasn't even like a serious thing. Wow. It was in his stories, and it just tanked his views, and it hasn't recovered since then. Now, do you think that that makes it that that's good, or do you think it makes it worse? That makes it worse. I think so then too. It just then it just it legitimizes the whole yes, the whole belief then, that you're course. that we're being censored, right? Because yeah, yeah, that's how I felt. I mean, I, you gotta. I mean, I I guess you just gotta absolutely. let it go. You know, if you're gonna have a platform, which again, we we we. Uh, uh, speculated on that, right? Like, so uh, how how are you? If you are Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, how do you decide what is and is not okay? Because obviously there's certain things that everybody would go like, that is wrong. Right. You know, you can't show that. That's wrong. You can't say that. And so we all agree. But as soon as you get into all these other gray areas where it's political and stuff like that, like, yeah. Where do you draw the line of what's well, okay? And they don't even have examples or any kind of page to reference like what's acceptable and what's not. There's no like description out there I, to even follow. I would not want to be right now in that position because they're literally screwed. I cannot think of a solution because yeah. you uh, either one, which is this is unrealistic, but on one hand, you could have actual people going through uh, you know pages that are being reported and determining. But then that sets you up for, are these people biased? Are they for one side? Are they for another side? Then you have the other side, which is fine. We'll create an algorithm. Mm -hmm. But then the algorithm is oftentimes messed up. For example, I got flagged for posting a picture of 50 Cent with Donald Trump's hair, mm -hmm. which is a funny meme. It was, a, right. it was a funny meme, yeah. but it said this was a, a doctored photo and I got a <laughs> warning for it. So I know it's an algorithm thing. So I know people are getting that. And then that, that just strengthens the whole thing like, oh, you're coming after me. Why? What did I do? Well, I just think that it, the reason why it's so weird for us right now is because we're we're in the middle of a transition. Um, and I talked about this before that, you know, we're soon uh, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, all these platforms will be just like CNN, Fox, and all the platforms that are on television, right? So you have our networks that are on television. Real soon here, uh, they will have, and, and this is probably what's going to accelerate that is the the you know uh, election. So, real soon here, all these outlets will have to draw a line and the they'll have to take a position. You know, they'll have to because they're you can't be in this gray area because it's going to cause more. It, you're better off real soon here coming out and just saying, okay, this is our kind of our political. Whether you announce it because obviously. CNN and Fox don't technically announce it completely. It's just obvious as fuck, right? Yeah. As soon as it gets that yeah, obvious, they say fair and balanced. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> sure. So, mm -hmm. I, you, by the way, when I listened to the last debate, <laughs> and I intentionally, uh, so I turned the TV on like maybe an hour, an hour and a half. Before. Oh, did you do the toggle back? And I forth did. Thing? I toggle back and forth for twenty minutes. 
Oh my god. It's two yeah. worlds. It is. It's yeah, weird, it's huh? It's completely different. It is so different and it's so terrible. It's mm. both or terrible, terrible. <sighs> it's it's unreal to me. But that, I mean that's what's gonna happen. It's gonna happen with the same thing for social. And I mean, I think it's great. It's gonna open up the opportunity for other platforms. We're gonna have a conservative and a liberal version of every one of these platforms and we saw it we've brought it up with that parlor one i think they're the first the first mm -hmm. one to maybe have get some traction against instagram so we'll see what happens with the other ones but i think that's just where we're going to get i think it's going to open up an opportunity for other platforms to exist that take the uh, the opposite side i just mike i feel sorry for the consumer it's just uh, when i was watching the cnn and fox back and forth i'm like oh my god i i the people that get sucked into one of these. Yeah, well, you know what? So here's my yeah, little. There's a lot of them. Here's my little ray of hope. Okay, do you guys remember when we were kids, when you went to the grocery store with mom or whatever, and you're waiting in line, and the little aisle next to the to the register has candy, junk food, and then tabloids. Do you guys remember these? Wolf boy born to you know whatever mom yeah, or, dude. or UFOs captured. And you remember as a kid, you'd look at those and be like, mom. They found aliens. Or mom, look, a wolf boy was born. Your mom's like, that's baloney. Yeah. There's nothing true about that. I wonder if when those tabloids first came out, if they had more power, like people bought them and were like, oh my God. And then after a while, people were like, all right, you know, 99% of this. Oh, don't be fooled, bro. So I'm wondering if those things, some... you know, the National Enquirer is like one of the most sold magazines in the world, bro. It gets yeah. sold like crazy. Yes. My but... grandmother read that like from front to back every single yeah, one. Yeah, now but... that's our real news. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. So yeah. I'm wondering if at some point people will just be like, all right, don't believe everything you read on, on the internet or, you know, oh, this is. Obviously biased. You know, I think I'm we're there. That. I think we're there right now. I think most people that I hear um, that, that that will argue one point, they're like, "Oh, you must only listen to Fox," or "Oh, you must only yeah. listen to CNN." They get called out on it right away. Yeah. If you, well, I mean, yeah. What we need is real journalists that like they don't. They're not getting paid one way or the other, which is like a really tough thing. How would like, you they do used that? To have, exactly. Yeah. Have a How do you do that? Government media. Yeah, yeah. that sounds better. <laughs> 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 Today's news: America's the greatest country in the That's world. That's what I mean. It's impossible. <laughs> so. Everything's going to be biased, yeah. but uh, yeah. yeah, what are you going to do? Yeah. So, hey, did you guys try the uh, Organifi granola that Jerry made this no, morning? No, she made it, but I haven't had Did you guys try it? I didn't yeah, try it yet. so she used uh, the Organifi pumpkin spice in Good. the, oh, yeah. in the uh, Again, huh? granola. So you can, Doug added some milk to that, and yeah. apparently it's really- Apparently you can eat pumpkin spice in through January. That's what I heard. Yeah, yeah. so- yeah, It's the, acceptable here, you know, socially. <laughs> this is showing me something that we don't give enough credit. They Organifi on their site, they have so many recipes- for things you can make with their protein, with their gold juice, with their green juice, to give you your supplement, your whatever nutrients you want, extra protein, with like, you can make cookies, pancakes, like yeah. so many different things. So this is like the seventh thing that she's made so far. And uh, I think- How did you like it? Everything she's made so far has been amazing. I've liked some stuff more than others, but this is really good. Yeah, the, mm -hmm. the, the pumpkin spice cupcakes were my favorite so far. That was I couldn't believe that. That's yeah. not, that didn't taste like there was any you know supplement in there. What were the chocolate ball ones with the peanut butter? Those ones Those had the protein are, in there. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of supplements, favorite. Speaking of supplements, are you how, how do you guys feel about the fact that we now have uh, a pre workout oh, with Legion? Yeah. Pretty I mean, cool. That's I, like my dream. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I, I would say you were the most excited about it for sure. Yeah. 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 No. yeah so so just for the list. Listeners, uh, we partnered with Legion to make to put our name on their Pulse um, pre workout supplement, and it's bubblegum flavored, which yeah. is a, a different flavor they haven't had. So if you like pre workout, and it's got all the stuff that you know effective pre workouts have caffeine, yeah. beta alanine, citrulline. Um, yeah, but it's also bubblegum flavor, which is only the mind pump one. Yeah, guys. and bubblegum. I'm working with Rachel on a whole campaign with some sports ball action with you, Sal. Are you really? So, with yeah. me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. this is going to be great. Yeah. <laughs> so watch out for that, You're not going to film me shooting the ball or anything. Oh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Oh, it's going to be fun. That's great. Yeah. First question is from Mindful Fuel. What exercises do you recommend for women who want to build lean, long, but not bulky legs but also want to grow the glutes. Okay. Um, all right. So a couple things here. Lean long. Yeah. Uh, okay. So what you want- <laughs> Nothing you're going to do is going to get them longer. Yeah. I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> you can hang upside down. You can stretch them out. Yeah, yeah, it's not going to happen. So, here, happen. so here's the deal. So here's what you're looking for. What you want is you want to be lean, but you also want to have muscle. So, And I'm basing that off of what you're telling me. The bulky comment- 
very, very few people build enough muscle to really have massive uh, legs, uh, even women, okay? Yeah. Usually what it is is they're just not lean. So mm -hmm. because they're not lean, and remember, body fat takes up more space per pound than muscle does. So if you, you know, 10 pounds of fat would take up something like 30% more space than 10 pounds of muscle. The fact that you said you want to grow your glutes and you want long, lean muscle, that tells me you want to have sculpted legs. So what you need to do, and this sounds kind of crazy, but it's not, if you want to get to that point, the fastest way to do it is to follow a workout that builds muscle the fastest while simultaneously eating in a way that promotes you to, to burn body fat. So you want to get mm -hmm. lean, but you also want to try to build muscle while you're doing this. Um, exercises to focus on, the ones that we talk about all the time, right? Your, your barbell squats, your lunges, get stronger at them. You want to do your stiff-legged deadlifts or your Romanian split stance squats. Those are phenomenal exercises. Hip thrusts for your glutes. If you want to follow a program uh, that'll do this, MAPS Anabolic is excellent. Um, a MAPS Aesthetic if you're a little bit more advanced. But based off of these comments, I mean, what you're really saying, because this is what you do as a trainer. Once you start training people for a while and you figure things out, they'll say a bunch of words and you'll actually read the, okay, what I need to do as a trainer. And what the trainer would know, someone who's good, would say, this person needs to build muscle and get leaner. The only thing you didn't touch on that could be a possibility too, is and very common, is uh, somebody who feels this way because they're very quad dominant um, and they they don't seem to grow their butt as as in uh, equal to as, as much as they grow their legs. So they feel like, man, I I do all these exercises that Sal just said, the Bulgarian you know split squats, the lunges, the squats, the deadlifts, and and I just feel like my legs blow up and they get bulky and my butt doesn't grow uh, uh, in in comparison to the your quads. And so if that's the case. It, that's addressing the recruitment patterns and how your body is actually if using your glutes. So there's a good chance that when you go to do a squat, you go to do a lunge, you feel most of it in your legs and very little bit in your butt. And if that's the case, then spending the time to prime your glutes. And if that's the case, the exercises that I would lean towards are things like sumo uh, deadlifts and hip thrust and Romanian deadlifts. Mm. Those are uh, a little bit easier to take the quads out of the movement, right? So you're going to see, you're going to feel very little of your quads doing a, a sumo deadlift, or you're going to feel very little of your quads when you're doing a hip thrust mm -hmm. or a Romanian deadlift. And so if you're somebody who's very quad dominant, uh, obviously fixing the recruitment pattern by priming more and trying to get the glutes to really fire properly, which we have stuff for all that. We have a good glute builder program. We've got free guides and content. We've got free stuff on YouTube to help you in that direction. I would look towards that and then exercises that I would be focusing on are the three that I just said. Yeah, I think too, this is just feeding a lot to the myth uh, that uh, you'll, you'll see people doing like heavy backloaded squats or heavy deadlifts and um, worried, like a lot of women are worried it's going to make them bulky and like look like a football player. And I had to have to, you know, talk talk that out of a lot of clients' uh, minds going into it. And unless you have like insano bodybuilding genetics, uh, it's really going to be difficult for you to put muscle mass on uh, like you've seen in terms of like a, a bodybuilder lady that has like insano legs. Yeah. And in even if you did, it still doesn't happen overnight. I've never no. met anybody that did squats. Years and years. Yeah. And then the next day they woke up and they're like, damn yeah. it, Sally, I told you, yeah. now I'm massive. Doesn't it doesn't yeah, work that way? Just focus on getting lean, like salsa. Yeah, I mean, pretty much. It doesn't it doesn't work that way. Here, here's another. You know, Adam makes great points about focusing on the posterior chain, the glutes, and the hamstrings. I've never, I have met maybe one or two women that did build legs very very quickly. It's super rare, but I didn't meet a couple. Never met a woman whose hamstrings built too much. Right. Those oh, tend yeah. to not. Those tend to not. You know, yeah. be muscles that bulk up a lot. So you could start your workouts out. With, That's how I try. So there this is. Go. I've actually dealt with this quite a bit. I think at one point. Um, the, I got kind of known as somebody to help people uh, with this situation. So I think I obviously it, I probably attracted more than the usual as a trainer you'd come across. And that was like my go to those those three moves focusing on the posterior chain when somebody's quad dominant is a great surefire way to make sure that their quads don't overdevelop and it puts so much energy and focus on the backside. And like you said, I've never met anybody that's like, oh, my hamstrings just get overdeveloped and they're just too big. You know, yeah, like I don't think I've ever heard. That. No, it's normally someone's quad dominant and their and their quads do blow up. And I have met uh, several women that have like I and I think they look great. But I mean, I get it. I get when they don't like that their quads are so big and then mm -hmm. they have a butt that doesn't seem to match the 
the size of their quads. And then because all the exercises, their quads are taking over the movement. So we, I just pull out a lot of the quad type exercises. So I don't like to leg press, lunge, hack squat. I don't want to do any of that with it, this lady. I want to do things that are more posterior chain related, um, but still get a little bit of development there, but focused on the hamstrings and glutes. Mm -hmm. Next question is from David GTZ09. Do calisthenics promote the same metabolism and testosterone boosting benefits of weight training? No, the opposite. Yeah. Okay. So there's two. So here's the things you want to focus on that will produce the best uh, results in terms of speeding up the metabolism and boosting anabolic hormone uh, like testosterone. Because remember, testosterone in men is the main muscle building hormone. Um, and the metabolism boost comes from the signal of building muscle along with the actual fact that you have more muscle. So what does that the best? Whatever is going to build more, the most muscle in your body is going to do that the best. Now, can you do that with calisthenics? And I'm using the, the term calisthenics loosely. When I'm saying calisthenics, I'm saying body weight exercises or exercises without weights. You can go pretty far. It depends how you do them. Now, mm. if you do calisthenics like boot camp, yeah. I, or, when I hear calisthenics, right. I think jumping jacks, yeah, and exactly, like, burpees, think, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I think of that stuff. Exactly. I'm talking about. I'm using it loosely. I'm talking about like muscle building, like gymnastic strength. rings. Yeah, like you know, pistol squats and you know, one arm push ups or push ups with the feet elevated, pull ups, like that, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Then yes, you can boost your metabolism and testosterone. Here, I mean, here's the deal: the intensity is going to determine that. Yeah, you if you want to build your metabolism to go to, to speed up and you want testosterone to go up, then do the stuff that builds the most muscle. And this usually means using weights. It usually does. Can you do body weight exercises to do this? You can. Just requires a little bit more uh, skill. But like you guys said, jumping jacks and stuff like that. No, that's not going to. Yeah, do it's it. hard to answer this because I mean, you're pigeonholing us to saying that is is it? I mean, calisthenics can if like for your point, they could do that. But nothing is going to promote it as much as building the most amount of muscle. And calisthenics most certainly is not the way to build the most muscle. Mm -hmm. If you were to run a standard five by five heavy type of routine, you will put on more muscle mass. You will speed up your mm -hmm. uh, your metabolism. Uh, a lot more than even doing pistol squats. It's a lunges. better tool for the job. Yeah, you, you know, and that's right. just that at the end of the day, that's why we steer people in that direction. But I mean, you can do uh, it with calisthenics, but I wouldn't even call them calisthenics because of what we kind yeah. of think of when you think of that. I'd think of it more as like really intensive body weight body training, weight training yeah. that you know is usually looks like a gymnastics type of a workout. Yeah, it is interesting though. Um, you know, because consider when when you're lifting weights, you're telling the body to build muscle. When that signal is received, your body tries to um, improve its ability to build muscle. So it knows it needs to build muscle because of the signal. So it tries to build muscle, but then it improves its ability to build muscle. It actually improves its capacity to adapt. This is where the testosterone raising uh, tends to happen because your body's like, okay, we keep getting this muscle building signal and we need to improve our ability. We need to make our ability to adapt to build muscle better. And the way to do that is to raise testosterone. There is almost nothing, aside from if you get bad sleep and then you get good sleep. Okay. So besides that, so let's say everything's fine. Nothing consistently raises testosterone like lifting weights. And all the studies that you look at, it consistently raises testosterone. And here's the thing with testosterone ra uh, raising and resistance training. In some cases, you'll do things that'll raise testosterone if you have low testosterone. Resistance training raises testosterone in men if they have low, mid middle, or high testosterone. It just raises it across the board. It's the best thing you could possibly do. So I'm glad that we, you know, we answered this question, but they both go hand in hand. Uh, build muscle, that's what gets the metabolism to get faster, and that's what raises the, the testosterone. Next question is from GIAC72. What are some specific exercises that will help build the muscles of your core like every other muscle in your body? So build, so I'm assuming they're talking about actually making them bigger like and stronger. adding resistance, yeah, yeah. I, that's what I'm picturing. You know, most, most effective, because in the past, um, you know, I trained my body, and then when I would do my core, I believed the myth that the core needed to be trained with high reps, mm -hmm. um, not use any resistance. And what would happen is I would get down to like 8% body fat, 9% body fat, and if I flexed my abs – you could see that I had a six pack, but if I didn't flex my abs, you couldn't see that I had a six pack. And I was really envious of you know certain people who seem to have six packs without flexing at all. And I thought, God, do I have to get like mm. super shredded for that to happen? Um, and then years later, it dawned on me: 
well, I don't have muscular abs or obliques, so they're not going to show um, unless I get super, super unhealthily lean. They're not going to show because they're not built, so let me train them like I would train my biceps or my shoulders or my chest to grow. And so I started doing high tension or what you call high resistance exercises. So like one of my favorite exercises is a, a decline sit-up, mm -hmm. a slow decline sit-up or a slow incline reverse crunch. It, there's resistance that the body is providing. You're at an incline or a decline, and you're having to really work the abs with you know lower reps, eight reps, 12 reps. Um, and it was like night and day, man. My abs went from not visible to then I had a six pack at eleven percent body fat because I built. Well, them. and I'm I'm kind of hesitant to just say just throw weights, you know, on these crunches or throw weights on like your leg lifts or if you're not recruiting properly first. That it's so dependent on that the the core. Uh, you can get a lot of good resistance just from uh, angles and and with yes. gravitational forces with with your core, uh, but you definitely can add weight. I would just highly uh, suggest to make sure that you know you're recruiting the way you should and not like incorporating a lot of your hip flexors involved. Uh, with your crunches. Well, Doug, aren't, aren't we practically giving our no BS six pack away with the, the anabolic this month? Yeah, we are. We yeah. are. We yeah. have a special with anabolic and no BS six pack. Uh, what is it? $59.95. Yeah, let's see. Maps October. Maps October dot com. Yeah. 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 So and, and yeah. it both it covers what you both are saying right now. So Justin brought up a good point about making sure that you know, your your recruitment pattern is right and you're not uh, using like your hip flexors to, for the movement. So stuff in there that's going to help you. Uh, some of the exercises that Sal, you allude to, they're in there. So, uh, I mean, that's a no brainer to me is to, to have that. So if you don't have that, I would get that. If you don't are not in the place to be able to get that, uh, I would search on our YouTube. So Mind Pump TV, we've got a ton of different exercises uh, for the core and for abs. Those are some of the most popular it, videos it, that we've done. You know, what's funny about this too is that uh, when I've trained, um, I, God, this is probably nine to 10 times. If I train someone that talks about wanting their abs to be more obvious or to stand out more. So I said, okay, we're going to build them. I'll watch them do exercises that they do 30 reps with. So I'll watch them do like a physio ball crunch. I'll change their form, and all of a sudden, it's a high-resistance, high-tension exercise. Right. A physio ball crunch done properly mm -hmm. with your low back on top of the ball, your hips pinned to the top, you're wrapping your back around the ball when you go down, then you slowly come up, push the hips up while you squeeze so that your hip flexors don't take over, you're not sinking your hips. Very few people can do more than 15 reps doing it that way. And if you need more resistance, arms above your head. straighten your arms out above your head yeah, and long, long lever it. All of a sudden, it's a it's a high tension, high resistance exercise that builds the abs, even though it's you're not holding any weight at all. So a lot of it has to do with form. Leg raises, I never see anybody do those right. I mean, no. if you do a leg raise properly and your your pelvis is is tilting at the top, or you're actually doing like a reverse crunch at the top, you find me someone that could do more than 10 reps of doing that properly. It's very, very difficult. Yeah. Next question is from BJ Sayer. What are the best exercises to superset to get the most work in during my time in the gym? So there's a lot of different ways to do supersets. Um, so you could superset the same muscle group. You could superset different muscle groups, you know, single joint to compound exercises. But mm -hmm. if I had to pick one and I had to do it in order to save time, and my goal is always to build muscle, right? That's the That's the goal with resistance training. I'm picking opposing muscle group uh, yeah, supersets. Yeah, love those. Yeah, because I'm doing, you know, bench press to barbell row um, would be a, a great example, or a shoulder press to a pull up, or something like that. So I'm hitting two opposing muscle groups, so I'm not doing tons of endurance for one muscle. Um, I, you know, Arnold was a big fan of this. He did a lot of, uh, you know, dips and pull ups. For example, was one super. That's one of my favorites, by the way. I don't know if you guys have done that, mm -hmm. where you go dips to pull ups. Yeah, just gives you a pump on on both sides of your body. I, I'm I'm with you on this. I don't disagree at all. The only thing that I would uh, say to add to that is that I would I would start posterior chain first, right? So, for example, you said the yeah. uh, rows and chest. Like I love. That's actually one of my favorite things to do. And I did a workout just like this the other day where I was crunched for time. And so every exercise I was supersetting and it was, you know, a posterior chain exercise followed by an anterior, right? So I would do something like a row first and then go into a bench press. And the mm -hmm. only reason why I say the row first in the bench press is because doing a row is going to prime the upper back and put you in a more advantageous position doing the chest press. If you chest press first and then go to the row, it's not as beneficial as far as putting you in the best position. Other than that, all the rest of them, you know, buys the tries, 
all that stuff I think is uh, that's the best way or that's the way that I personally like to do it when I'm crunched for time and I'm doing a full body routine. Totally. Yeah, I, I mean, I totally agree. I mean, this is just like an echo chamber in here, but I I think it's fun to to do like a, if, if I'm working angles with my elbows for triceps, for instance, and I just hit it back and back, uh, you know, tricep exercises from different angles, you yeah. know, something like that. But, you know, that's just going to promote fatigue and that's cool if that's part of what I'm doing for, for that workout. Then that's well, that's fun. what ma- and that's what makes the way that we're saying, I think, so superior is because it's not that there's not lots of other ways and lots you can do a compound exercise and then didn't do a single joint exercise, you know, and you can do the whole routine like that. And there, there's nothing wrong with that. But it, you're also when you're when you're doing that, it, there's going to be a little bit of exhaustion. So if you go to a chest press over to a tricep push down, your triceps are involved a lot in a chest press. And so you're going to be kind of weak when you go to the tricep push. Right. Nothing wrong with that. Just I don't think it's the I'm not going to get the most out of my workout doing the opposing muscle group, you're going to have a little bit of gas still. You're sure your energy is down a little bit because you just did an mm-hmm. exercise. But if you just go do a row, your chest is not going to be fatigued at all. So then going to a chest press, you're going to have the most gas for that in order to still get a lot out of your chest press versus if you go do a, a row, you know, a heavy row, and then you go do bicep curls, yeah. your biceps are a little Maybe fried. Yeah, are a little fried from the rows already. So you're not going to be able to lift very much weight with the bicep curls. Yeah. And it, and it does encourage good form on, on some of these supersets. Like you said, a row before a press. Here's some of my favorite uh, supersets. Anything bicep, tricep is a lot of fun. So arm supersets, great way to save time. And um, doesn't really, there's, there's, it doesn't take away from straight sets that much because arms don't fatigue you that much. In fact, uh, nine out of 10 times when I work out my arms, I go bicep uh, to tricep. Um, here's another fun one, and this is different than what we're talking about, but this is a lot of fun. Try going deadlift to pull up. That is, a, oh. that is amazing. <laughs> like do your, do, and this That's is how, evil, I, dude. this is how I like to do it though. I like to go heavy deadlift. So like a, a set of two or three reps. So just very, very heavy set. Then I jump up to the bar. So I'm literally deadlifting in front of a bar. Then I jump up to the bar, and then I'll do something like 10 reps. And the pump you get in your back yeah. is uh, – it's its insane. It's it, unheard of. It's also cool, too, because you actually – the pull-up will feel light. If yes. You're, if, you're pulling, if you're pulling two to three reps – Yeah, I'm know. not doing high reps with the deadlift. Yeah, yeah, if you're deadlifting, you know, in your case, that's you're easily doing over 350, so you're probably doing 400 pounds. And then you go do your pull your body weight up, which is only 200 pounds. Mm-hmm. You fly up the bar. It's a mm-hmm. really cool feeling, especially if you have a hard time doing pull-ups. It's amazing when you do that. I, I love just to show somebody that. It's just like, hey, go do a, one or two heavy uh, deadlifts and then watch how you get up yeah. on the pull-up bar. Now, for lower body, here's some of my favorite uh, other supersets. Let's say I'm working with someone who has trouble feeling like a squat in their hamstrings or their glutes. I'll do like a leg curl, maybe on a physio ball right next to the squat rack or hip thrust, then go straight to a barbell squat and I'll use really light weight and then you get a crazy posterior chain pump. Let's say I'm working with someone that really wants to work the quads really hard. I'll go sissy squat or leg extension straight to a light squat. And I mean, three, literally three rounds of doing that properly, three, four rounds, your leg workout is done. And you get, again, another insane And pump. you can do like some paps at a time too with heavy squats and then do a couple box jumps after that. Oh, yeah. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, if you want to puke for yeah. sure. Uh, look, yeah. Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. Come check us out on YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast. You can also find us on Instagram. You can find Doug, the producer at Mind Pump Doug, Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. Well, hard work always beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Oh, I love that. One of the other keys to this, right? So how do you go into something well, and, and before you even go into it and have the desire to win and be great at it, but then also be okay uh, with losing? And, and we've talked about this in other, thing, in, uh, other aspects of life, and that is 